try with last week, right? Oh, you're just getting ahead. You're right. Well, hello. Welcome to Create Talks. Woo! Imagine a world without color. Look at this room. I'm in the process of redoing my art room. And if you look at this room and thinking, what's missing? It's color. It's creativity. It's, it's what we want. And I wanted you to know like today, you can ask me any question that you want. And we just want to discover the power of creativity, the power of what God is doing. I'll be speaking in Monterey area just this weekend. And we'll be talking about how people can start to have breakthrough in being creative and being who they are. And it's amazing how just that little push of bringing in a color, of bringing in who we truly are, brings life into the room. So join me and we just want to hear from you. So go ahead and type in any questions that you'd like me to ask and we'll get started. Okay, first question. This is from Marco. Hey Marco, thanks for joining. What keys have you discovered to unlock creative expression? That is such a great question. One of the beliefs that I have is that God gives us curiosity. And curiosity is where my imagination begins to ask questions about what would it be like if? And that is God speaking to me about unlocking the hidden treasure that he wants to see all over the planet to see things get, get transformed. A, a good example would be, I, I was in speaking in Southern California and there was an artist and he came and he had done what was called Faces of a City in Southern California and in that he wanted to capture what the homeless looked like and then he would sell that and give the proceeds back to the homeless and he called it faces of, of the city that he was in. So I had curiosity. I said, God, I want that to happen in my city in Redding, California. So I said to myself, I said, Holy Spirit, I want a divine appointment to be able to do that. So I was talking to the city because we were having our art displayed at the city hall, my art and some um, fellow artists. And I said, wow, would you ever like to do something like the faces of Redding? But again, my curiosity in discovering that potential said, you know what, they were doing the homeless, but let's do all the different types of populations of writing and tell their story behind it and do an exhibit. And they said, please, yes, when can you come? So now we're partnering with the city to do that. So I find that I'm curious. Like if, I, if I'm a musician, if I like a certain type of music, that's God leading me into that. Or if I love what's happening in photography and I'm drawn to a certain photograph or a certain photographer, God's calling me to study that, to see what I should do. And one of the things that I believe happens, Marco, is that we stop there and we go, oh, that was a great thought, but we don't follow it out. So discovering your creative potential means that you follow that out, that you actually start to move forward and you do something to launch yourself for greater influence. And so I just want to pray for you, Marco. I, I feel like there's many of you out there that are looking for, how can I discover my creative potential? Or, or what could I do? Or who am I to do that? So I just pray for those that are watching that need a breakthrough right now to discover that, that you would hear from the Holy Spirit and that you would create things that tap into what you've always wanted to do, your passion, a justice button, something of what you love, and I want you to go for it. And then tell us the testimony about what happens, Marco, and all of you out there, because we'd love to share that with everyone else watching. Here's another question. This is from Andrew. I've heard you and some of your previous guests on Create Talks mention ministering through face painting. Could you explain how you could go about doing this and maybe share some testimonies? I'd love to hear more. Yeah, that's awesome, Andrew. I'll give you some testimonies. First of all, everything that God gives you is telling the story of his goodness. And we link it into the prophetic, which is 1 Corinthians 14, verse 3, where we want to give people an encouraging, empowering word, and we use it through whatever creative means would touch people. The reason why face painting or body tattoos are so important 
is that we are actually marking people for God. We are actually touching children that might never have been touched before or adults. And so it's a way of also talking to them. So, the, so number one, if you want to do it prophetically and creatively, is ask Holy Spirit where to go. Ask Him what places would really like tap into that. And the third thing you want to do after you have a place is you want to ask Holy Spirit for what that person is like and then create on their face who they are and or take what they want and then prophesy over them. And it just like opens up tons and tons of doors. I, I'll i give you an example. I was in South Africa and I was ministering and so this group of people had never ever even gone out in the marketplace and touched people through creativity and they had never ever seen like a demonstration of how to do that so I just told them exactly what I told you right now ask Holy Spirit be curious begin to create begin to ask him so they're creating and these two people that have never done this before create these beautiful lions for this uh, probably about a 24 or 23 year old uh, pair like the, I think they were a couple and then as they're as they're doing it they're going oh I believe that it's like you're like the Lion of Judah. They go, well, who's the Lion of Judah? So they begin to share about Jesus, and they came to Christ. And they go, wow, this is so cool. I didn't know that, that Jesus loved me. And it's those certain things of doing something and then linking it in to who they are that can transform people. Uh, when I go to Santa Cruz and Monterey this weekend, we'll be teaching them how to do prophetic creativity in face painting and in prophetic balloons and we'll blow up a balloon we'll make it into a crown and we'll say you are God's royalty you are his princess here's a sword guess what you're a mighty warrior and we'll take whatever expression we can and we'll bring it into the fact of who they are because God has a message for everyone so let me know Andrew how that goes and uh, and we'll pro I'll be sharing some testimonies next week about what we did in Santa Cruz Okay, this is from South Africa. See ya. Thank you for joining us. Yay, woo, I love South Africa. How did you get more people engaged in this, vision, in this great vision that God gave you for your city? Oh, that is a great question, See ya. The first thing is like we have to have ownership for our city. We have to realize that God has planted us in Joshua 1.3. It says that every place where he put his foot, that was going to be God's place for them. That was going to be their inheritance. And so, see, what I first of all did is I claimed that city, this reading, for God. And I began to ask Holy Spirit, where do you want to touch? Who do you want to touch? And then I just began to go out with people and I began to release the presence of God. And I just shared testimonies. Because they had all of this wealth of things that I had done in Southern California with face painting, with balloons, with art, with all different kinds of ways. And I thought, wow, the church needs to know that anybody can do it. So number one, I didn't exclude anyone. Did you hear me, Sia? So the people in your church that are the most hungry to go out, those are the people that you want to go with you. And then you just say, hey... Here's a balloon you can blow up. Hey, here's, and you just look on, you just look online and say, Google, how do you do a balloon sword? It's that simple. <laughs> and then you create it and then you get and unite all the young kids. Uh, and, and this is going to be so important that we understand the power of what we are created to be. And then you just go ahead and you begin to plan, okay, where do we want to go? Do we want to go to the park where there's kids? Do we want to go to the library? Um, do we want to go wherever it is? And then you create a platform for what they would enjoy. So find out what your city needs. Take ownership for your city and bring people that are passionate to touch their city and figure out ways that you could implement that on a regular basis. Nothing stops us more than the fact that we haven't ever done it before. And that just is, that's how it was in Acts. Can you, can you imagine? Jesus left and the Holy Spirit came and then they had to have creative ideas of how to transform the world and they took who they knew and what they knew of Jesus and they took their craft. They took, they took whatever they had, their, their mouth, their, the preaching that Jesus had given them, 
what they understood biblically. They, they, under, they took everything and they began to transform culture because they saw what they needed and what was important. And God wants us to do the same. So Sia, we declare that South Africa will come into its destiny because God's going to bring you a mighty army and that your city is going to be touched and transformed. It just takes one passionate person, Sia, to touch the city and that's you. And God will bring you your disciples, the ones that are close to you. And then get my book, Born to Create. Get my book, Cultivating Kingdom Creativity. Or get my workbooks because in those you're going to find out more about what that looks like. By the way, um, reminder, share the video, comment on, comment on the questions that are being said. So if you have any comments, go ahead and, and bring that. We want to hear more. So kudos on that stuff. Go ahead and, and tell me what you like. Okay, this is Christian. Christian, love you. How do you spend time soaking in the presence? And how do you release it in the midst of people, whether they are believers or not? That's such a great question, Christian. I feel like when we soak, and for those of you that don't know, soaking is just resting in God's presence. It's like meditating on a scripture. It could be like listening to some meditation or music. It, there's so many different ways. I like to like soak and walk. So a lot of you out there that are creative, you know what I'm talking about. You just you get into a place where you can hear from God. And then I always ask him, Holy Spirit, who do you want me to touch? And after I get filled up, he shows me people that are in my life that need to be touched. And then I ask this question. I say, Holy Spirit, what do they need today? And it could be a phone call. It could be me to text a painting that I, I'd done. It, it could be a photo that I'd taken. It could be an encouraging poem. Whatever it is, I ask Holy Spirit to anoint that. And then what I do is I go ahead and I give that away. And then I find out how it touched people. Uh, I'll, I'll never forget, as an example, I was soaking in God's presence. And he told me to create an art piece. And on it, there was a mountain. And there was a person going up this mountain. And it said, you can climb to the top of any mountain because God is always with you. He will never leave you. And I was out and about, had that in my purse. And when I was going out to dinner, there was a woman that was on the curb. And I felt like that picture and that art piece that I'd done was for her. In literally five minutes, I had drawn this. So she came into the restaurant, and I gave her the card. And I said, excuse me, but I believe I did a card for you. Would you mind if I read it and showed it to you? And she said, no. And as I did that, she shrieked. The whole, the whole entire restaurant turned around to look at, at her and me as she's just holding on to me. And she goes, my boyfriend that I've been living with for three years, he just came in because we broke up and, and brought in his fiance. And you can imagine her heart, how broken it was. And I said, isn't that interesting that I said, God will never leave you or forsake you. And that's the beauty, Christian, of following what God's saying, of going after the presence of God. And so right now, Christian, I declare that your soaking times, and those of you that are watching, uh, be filled. Ask Holy Spirit where He wants you to go, what He wants you to do, and then br tell me uh, tell me some testimonies. And hey, if you have any testimonies from soaking and what God did, make sure that you put that on my Facebook so we can all share about the goodness of God. Crystal, thanks for joining. I feel like this is her question. I feel like I'm creative, but I can be all over the place. Ah, how do I find my home and work on my talents? Oh, Crystal, you were probably speaking to 80 to 85% of the people that are watching because creativity many times is multifaceted. And many times God wants us to create in different ways because of the anointing that's on our lives. And so number one, sometimes God wants us to be eclectic to have many different things why because they're like tools in a tool belt and there are times when I can do art that's going to transform people I have a tool belt of poetry I can bring that out and I can touch people I have a tool belt in speaking I can bring that out or in music so I have all these different things that God can use in my life that that God can bless to transform culture 
So sometimes we, we narrow it down, but God doesn't narrow it down. I would like to encourage you to look at the life of some of the people that you love, like David. Here we have David who wrote how many, how many psalms, who played music, and also danced and brought about a lot of like issues because he danced before the Lord with all of his might. Here we have three different examples of ways that he creatively expressed himself. And God enjoyed every single one of them. So here's the key, Crystal. And I want to look you in the face. And for those watching, if God has anointed it and it touches people, it's worth doing. End of story. Now, if you want to perfect a skill, God will give you that desire and he will help you to fulfill that. But if you're not feeling that yet, why struggle with which one when God's given you so many? And I find that God leads me. I'll give you an example. Like uh, the reason why I do so much art right now is because I have a, a very strong, um, what I would consider like um, opportunity or favor at Bethel to creatively do that and lead that whole department within everything that you see on Bethel TV. So for me, that's like a vantage point. But also I've raised up the film and the dancers and the artists. And so now they're in there and then they're leading in those departments as well. And now we have Bethel Conservatory of the Arts. And so sometimes, and I want to speak to you, Chris, on those watching, sometimes you're, you're called to bring out the great things that others have and that's why you have those gifts. Because now I know what makes a great filmmaker. I know what makes a great writer. I know what makes a good um, actor. And I can call that up in people. And I can release them to be who they're called to be. So the gifts that you have aren't just for you. But they're for you to develop yourself so that you have a wide variety. But sometimes you're called to be the mentor to help the others out to become great as well. Linda. Linda, thanks for joining. Here's her question. Do you have any tips on how to lead other ladies into expanding their creativity more prophetically? I'm finding that some are fearful of the prophetic and tend to shut down. Now, I know that everybody out there watching feels completely adept at giving a prophetic word like Sean Bowles or some great prophetic people that we know. Let's laugh at that. Like, Prophetic is always a risk. Prophetic is always something that that scares people. So, Linda, I want to encourage you. You don't even have to say the word prophetic. Did you hear what I said? You don't even have to say it because it can be intimidating to people. So what I say is let's draw some encouraging cards for people and then let people have a go. And you just put on some soaking music, some meditative music and say, Holy Spirit, show us what to create. And it could be anything. So you give them a lot of parameters of freedom. And then they create for 20 minutes or whatever. And then they go, okay, who is this for? Then they give it away. And then they get to see who was touched by just giving away a piece of art to someone else. So I find the best thing is to go in with low expectations so that they can understand the principle of just blessing. Everybody wants to be blessed. Everybody understands, hey, I love my birthday card. Hey, let's make birthday cards for each other. And that kind of language will help them to become more and more secure. Um, the other thing, and I want to encourage you in this, Linda, is be the example. So for me, that was huge in what I've done in creating this movement, is I gave away my art, or I would give away a poem, or I would give stuff away. They would see that breakthrough, and then others would be encouraged to do the same. And so I make it fun. Sometimes when people think of the prophetic, what do they think of? Ooh, I have to get every word right. I have to be perfect. Am I right? So I just bless you to encourage, to learn to hear from the Holy Spirit, to bless them when they hear, and then share with us the breakthrough that, that they've had on my public Facebook page because we want to share what God's doing. Thanks for joining, Linda. This is Tanya. This is her question. How do I overcome that my art is not good enough, negative self-talk, which I think many creatives suffer from. And when are you coming back to South Africa? Actually, I'm coming back. I'm coming back in um, January of 2018. Yeah, so I'm coming back, yay! But Tanya, how do they overcome? This, 
This is such a great question. And a lot of you out there, I know if I were to have you raise your hands over the internet, <laughs> over Facebook, you'd all be, can I raise my hand high enough? It's, it's a spirit, Tanya. There's a spirit that has robbed the body of Christ. And that spirit is the, the enemy coming in and saying, I have to become so humble in the wrong sense in order for God to be pleased with me. And that is never seen in scripture. So Tanya, first of all, I just want to say to you, and those of you that have been plagued by this, that you're not alone, that this has really been something that so many people have, have bought into. And the only way out of that I have found is by declaring the opposite every day until you believe it. So Tanya, that would mean by saying, I declare that God made me to be good and to creatively express his heart. And whatever I create is good and it has a purpose. If you just, if you just type in everything that I just said that right there, those of you that are watching and said that in the mirror to yourself every day and to give yourself a 40 day challenge and begin because it's a mindset shift. Because the reason that we are so plagued by this is because the enemy does not want you to believe in who you are and God created and who God created you to be. And I don't hear that from Daniel. Daniel didn't say, oh my gosh, I can't really um, interpret that dream because I'm not good enough. Or Bezalel in Exodus 30, oh, I can't create the Ark of the Covenant because I'm not good enough. No, there wasn't anything like that. So it's not the Spirit of God that is that is there but it's the enemy and so to combat that it says that the spirit sends us truth and he sets us free to do that I have to change the way that I think about who I am and what I'm saying to myself so right now I declare that you are going to have awesome creative art that you were born to create great create creative expressions that it's God's desire for you to succeed it's God's desire for you to bless what you create and not curse it. And so, Father, I pray that we would start a mighty revolution. I want to encourage you too, Tanya, to read my book and, and to do the exercises after each chapter because that's going to help you to sanctify your imagination, to learn more about people and testimonies about how people have been set free. And we just bless you. And bless South Africa. Roseanne, thanks for joining. Uh, Roseanne, this is her comment, I'm an artist and have been painting flowers for 13 months but want to do prophetic art but can't seem to step into it. I paint from photos but prophetic art is in my mind so harder to translate. Oh, that's a great question, Roseanne. I, I want to thank you. And this might be a question for, I, I want to say for every type of artist. So for musicians, for example, Musicians might want to play exactly what's on the sheet of music. Or if you're a photographer, how I want to do exactly what that photograph, I mean what that picture represents. It could happen in writing. I have to get the prose correct and everything. But what happens is like if, if we move and we breathe, that doesn't allow for the Holy Spirit to come. So Roseanne, what I want you to do, and those of you that are watching, I want you to know that the Holy Spirit wants to partner I call it co-creating. You're co-creating with God. And by that, you need to let go of control. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> and you need to play with God. Realize that He wants to play with you. Realize that, that he, it, He's not just into form. And for many of you that have learned technique, you have positioned yourself to get into that, into that position. So here is an exercise for all of you watching. And please let me know next week. Um, take some time, Roseanne, take some time, and those of you watching that have this problem, and I want you to create without agenda. I want you to create, and I want you to begin to like let God into that and let the form change. So it could be that you just do improv music. It could be that you do, instead of a realistic flower, you just paint with colors. Whatever it is that, that your creative expression is, I want you to explore creating with Him and ask Him, Holy Spirit, what, how do you see that flower? Holy Spirit, what do you want to highlight in whatever you're creating? And then let Him into it. That's number one. 
The second thing I would do is after you create whatever it is that you're creating, I want you then to ask others, what did you think of that? Play the music, show them the flower piece of art, and let them interpret it for you because then you're seeing how the Holy Spirit's using you in a way that goes far beyond what you can do on your own. This is exciting, Roseanne. I bless you with that. Co-create with God. There's so much more for you in that. We are running out of time, but I wanted to encourage you. I am doing, I'm so excited to announce this. We're doing what's called Create 28. It's 28 days of unlocking and releasing your creativity. And I'm putting it together right now, and it's in process, but it'll be It'll be put together in a couple months and it'll be an online course for you to take so that you can have these breakthroughs and you can see stuff happen every day. Because if you have 28 days of creating a habit, of changing the way we think, of dreaming about what we want to do, daring for it, and then doing it, that's when we see significant results. And that's what I want for you. You were born to create and I want you to learn about that through this course. And again, thank you so much. I'm going to pray for all of you. And I just want to see you grow. I'm, I'm so glad that you joined me in, in, at, in these questions. And if anybody else needs this, please share this with them. So Papa God, thank you for what you're doing. Thank you that this is a journey that we're all on to create what you have destined us to create and to create with you, Papa God. And I pray that this would be a week for breakthrough for Roseanne and Marco and those that have been watching to just take these simple truths and begin to flesh them out in who they are. And I say, God, let us create things that transform history. Let us create things that shift and change the atmosphere for those around us. And we bless this and we bless who you are in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for joining and I'll see you next week.